Hello everybody. Uh, today then I'm moving on to the internals of my cylinders which are now complete. Uh, I've shown you those in a so many part series and if you've not seen them take a look back at them if, you've, if, if you're interested. And today I'm moving on, on to the internals. And the internal bits to start with I'm going to do the pistons and the piston rings and the piston rods. So what you're going to need then for this is a little bit of phosphor bronze which I've managed to find in my drawers for the pistons a little bit of cast iron for the piston rings which I come across in one of my drawers and then you want the piston rods which are in stainless steel now I've actually started on the piston rods and it's quarter inch stainless quarter inch diameter and with the 2BA thread on each end to the appropriate lengths so without further ado I'm going to move over to the lathe and start turning the pistons the piston rod and I've got the piston now and I'm going to use some Loctite oil tolerant eye strength retainer and I'm going to screw it onto piston rod as tight as I can and then I've got to put a lock, Loctite a lock nut on on this side it's best to make sure to, to take your cover off off the one that it's going to fit in and make sure that the shaft the piston shaft or rod actually slides up the cover and also slides up the little gland what holds the o-ring in to make sure there's no tight spots on it Yeah, that's better. One, one twenty-nine and a half. That's that one. What's this one measure? That one is one thirty. Yeah. So that's it then. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just take the burrs off the corners, and then uh, that one's finished. Right. I've got my grooves cut now, but. I'm going to say this, um, I didn't finally go in full, the full width all in one cut. I went in with a half size tool. Instead of one eighth, I went in with a sixteenth and I went in, I took two cuts to get most of the material out. Then I, once I'd done that, I've put my proper, properly ground tool in and uh, just trim down the faces to the depth in that way I wasn't taking so much uh, force on me cutting me cutting forces
that's the pistons completed then, that's my day's work for today. Uh, they all assembled up, well that one's fully assembled, I've just got to put this one in now and put the cover on. I'll just run through this drawing with you because there is a few little pointers I'd like to I'd like to share with everybody what I've found while I were doing it. So that's your piston drawing then and that's your piston rod drawing. You've also got to make two brass 2BA nuts, locking nuts to lock the piston the piston on the rod once it's locked tight it on. So when you're cutting the grooves uh, all the dimensions are just nominal dimensions so in the write up it says form the piston ring grooves 8 thou deeper than shown on the drawing so that's a point to watch and also you've got to make them 5 thousandths wider than shown on the drawing so it's 1 8 plus 5 thousandths which is 0 0.130 uh, the only other th few things I've come across that might be helpful I don't know if you can see that drawing there it shows you doing it in a three jaw with a split bush and it's saying skim the piston to the final size well I won't do it like that I think you might have some problems doing it that way if you put the grooves in first and then lock tight the piston onto the rod I might be wrong but I don't think I am them grooves are never going to run true because the shaft is so small and when you're tightening that piston onto that thread you'll find that when you when you set it up to put it in your to skim the top the grooves will be way out then uh, I made a tool up 0.130 and I was going to plunge in and cut it in one go but because it's such a sm small diameter shaft even with the centering I've centered the end the cutting forces were just too much for the small shaft so what I did I made another tool up half the size and I went in twice and left a few thousandth to come off the depth and once it were all roughed out I then put my proper tool in that I'd made at 1.130 wide and then I formed the, th formed the groove with that tool so there were less, less to cut off before you start turning the piston in the lathe obviously that way in the chuck put it in the other way first while you've still got some material on the top to grip it and just double check that everything slides on the quarter inch rod you cover and you'd land you want them to be a nice sliding fit so you need to know that before you you, you know before you machine your piston so that's one point there and then when you turn it over I found that it were best done in a collet because you want this shaft to be running dead true so that it lines up with the bore and the hole in the cover so they need to be concentric so once you know your cover's going to fit you can put it in your lathe and turn the top and before you take it out and before you do the grooves you've probably seen my video, I think I've shown you me doing it I, tr I actually tried the cylinder onto the piston while it were in the lathe to make sure it were, it were a nice fit yeah I've got that one sliding lovely in that one so I'll just assemble this one together then I've put some oil on if you don't put no oil on it'll never slide in and I'll put the cover on just going back a step when you're machining all your covers up they all need to be 
faced up nice and true so that everything marries together because if they don't and you screw this on and something's a bit out it's going to rot it's going to cock over so i'm going to move on to the piston rings tomorrow then and i might do a little video of that and after them piston rings then i can then move on to this valve and the valve rod and the valve nut etc anyway I'm starting to waffle now so I'll I'll sign off for now then thanks for watching and I'll catch you on my next video bye for now then